Next, tragedy strikes, accidents happen. Be there when the calls come in. It's back-to-back -back episodes of Rescue 911. Next on Discovery Health Channel. Today on Rescue 911, friends in the great outdoors. A deadly fall in the middle of nowhere. Someone help us, please! Places one man's life in the hands of another. When I looked into his eyes, it was like he wasn't there. Plus, on Rescue 911. We begin in the scenic mountains outside White River Junction, Vermont. Every year somebody usually dies in the gorge. There's about a 163 foot drop on both sides, which is vertical. And one wrong move and, and it could end your life. On June 29, 1992, Damian Halleck and his friend Irv Smith were searching for coins in the Queechee River. I've got one. It's about a 62. People have been throwing coins from the bridge for years. Find anything yet? Yeah, mostly just rocks and mud. Where we were searching, those coins were getting kind of scarce. So Damian just kind of wandered off. I figured he was just going to look at another place. The walls are made of shale. It seems like it's got a lot of texture to it, okay, I'll be fine. but it doesn't hold you up at all. So I figured he'd do like the rest of us have, start up the walls, and then just stop and come back down. Up above on the bridge that spanned the gorge, Lon Ballard and his wife spotted Damien on the side of the cliff. He can barely get his footing. I told my wife, this guy's crazy climbing up the side of this gorge. I think he's got any rope. Look how that's... In fact, as he was climbing, you could see a few rocks starting to drop. And I thought he was a novice and probably didn't know what he was doing. Seeing him fall was the absolute worst. I honestly thought that there was a major puddle of blood on the other side with him just all broken up. We'll call for help! We thought that he was dead because, you know, it was such a hard hit and he hit head first. I'd never seen somebody fall and die. When we continue, when I looked into his eyes, it was like he wasn't there. It didn't seem like it could be possible that he would actually live through it. Need help down here! Sunday, two teams will collide on sports' biggest stage. But who cares? We've got the Animal Planet Puppy Bowl. More touchdowns, more tackles, more tail wagging. It's puppies, puppies, and more puppies. The Animal Planet Puppy Bowl kicks off Sunday at 3. Ride the razor's edge between life and death with the people who walk it every day. Trauma, life in the ER, tonight at 7 Eastern, only on Discovery Health Channel. When Damien Halleck fell 40 feet down the shale cliffside of Quichi Gorge, bystanders on the bridge above ran for help, while Damien's friend Irv Smith rushed to his aid. Damien! 
Amen. Amen. I rolled him over knowing that he might have broke his back or his neck, but I got to clear the airway. Damien, talk to me if you can. Come I knew on. how to stabilize his neck from yeah. the training that I received in the military. However, I felt that he would be paralyzed. Get something to cover that wound you got on your head, okay? I'll be right back. There was an awful lot of blood okay. coming mostly from his head. Someone help us, please! Someone help! And then his body went into convulsions. He just didn't seem like it could be possible that he would actually live through it. The call for help sent rescuers with the Hartford Fire Department to the scene from their station six miles away. When I looked into his eyes, it was like he wasn't there. I was afraid that he'd go into shock and we'd never get him back. So I had to keep talking to him. I had to keep him awake. I couldn't, I couldn't lose him. Within seven minutes of the call, medic units arrived, including EMT Jeff Libby. When I heard it was a gorge rescue, the first thing that started running through my mind is you gotta prepare yourself for the worst. Hey! Is he conscious? Yes. Is he having any difficulty? When I saw him laying there, it did look like um, it was gonna be a fatal fall. Is he having problems breathing? The bleeding had slowed down to almost a stop. Talk to me. So I didn't know if it was the hypothermia that was causing it okay. or a lack of blood. That's gonna be here shortly. It took 20 minutes to hike down into the gorge. Before the medics could get to the victim, the specially trained high angle rescue team arrived at the bridge, led by Fire Chief John Wood. Right down here. Took about a 40 foot fall. Rescues at the gorge are, are one of the more nerve wracking type rescues that we perform because of one little slip and one of the rescuers could be um, severely injured himself. When the paramedics arrived, I just had a terrible weight lifted off my shoulders. How's he doing? When I'm looking at this person, he's not moving any of his extremities. The chances are, um, with a 40-foot fall, that he could be paralyzed. At that time, they sent us six more rescuers down and a Stokes stretcher. He was talking very deliriously. He wanted to know if he was going to die. And we have to try to downplay that to try to get him to talk to us, um, try to get him not to think of those things. Hold on. Chief Wood decided it was too risky to attempt to lift Damien up the 160 feet to the bridge. So the firefighters had to carry him back up the trail. When I saw him carry him out, I had a very strange feeling that I'd probably never see Damien the way I'd used to seeing him. The fear of it all was finally starting to catch up to me. Twenty-two-year-old Damien Halleck was taken to Dartmouth Hitchcock Medical Center where he was diagnosed with a broken neck. His mother, Deidre Miller, was notified of his accident. I didn't know if he was paralyzed. I didn't even know if he could think. I didn't know anything. And I didn't know what to expect when I got there. Among the doctors treating Damien was orthopedic surgeon Phil Bernini. I think Damien's friend Irv really did a remarkably wonderful thing because not only did he immediately save Damien's life by allowing him to roll out of the water so that he can breathe on his own, but he did it in such a way that he protected the spine from excessive motion, which could have damaged the spinal cord, resulting in either paralysis or death. 
One year later, Damien has completely recovered from the injuries he suffered in the fall. I was in extreme pain. Every, every bone in my body hurt. I had the fear of not walking again, but I had the hope that uh, everything would be all right. I'm absolutely amazed that he's doing as well as he is. His attitude has changed a lot. He's a lot more careful on what he does. We went down to the Quichi Gorge on the exact same day that the accident happened a year ago. And he just looked at the wall and he didn't say anything. He just, I'd like to know what he was thinking, but he wouldn't tell me. You know, he just left it at that. And it's great to have him back. It's just great. If I have any advice to give to people, Think about all the things that you've done in your life, everything that you've enjoyed doing. Imagine now that you can't do any of those. Imagine that you can't do any of those. You are now on a bed. You're now in a wheelchair. You are now relying on other people to do things for you. You'll realize real quickly how stupid I had been. If I had one thing to say to the rescue people, it would be, thank you. It seems so insignificant just to say thank you. They saved my son's life. Next. Next, step inside the command center where the calls for help are answered and meet the real-life heroes who save lives. Stay tuned for another episode of Rescue 911. Next on Discovery Health Channel. Real life. Medicine. Miracles. Mr. Shapiro, step out of the car, please.